in this video we'll talk about what are input output subsystem so we'll start with what is an input output subsystem it is a circuit that is responsible for entering information into a system or coming out of a system the circuit is connected to input output devices so here are some input output devices such as keyboard, mouse, display, disk and there can be many more so in this diagram there is an input output subsystem that is connected to our input devices such as mouse, keyboard and screen and this circuit is connected to a bus and through it it maintains connection between microprocessor and memory the reason it is called subsystem because the complexity of the devices or the instruction that they require to exchange the information between these devices and rest of the computer system are all handled through this circuit and this circuit is called subsystem. So here are a few properties of input output subsystem. Number one property is to accommodate large number of devices and number two the order of operation of the devices and number three it handle multiple devices now we will talk about the operations input output operation is done in two different ways number one is special instruction in special instruction we make two instruction that is in and out and they do have a specific location when a microprocessor wants to read the key it uses and press using in microprocessor we are talking about instruction when a microprocessor wants to read the key when a user presses it it uses the in instruction and when the microprocessor wants to visualize the specific character it uses out instruction and there is another method for to perform an operation that is memory math input output system it uses memory and other block of a computer system of all possible location in memory and some of them do not contain memory but what they contain instead of input output location of all of these devices in my microprocessor do not need instruction, it recycles the load and store instructions. Now let's talk about the benefits of both the operation. In in and out, we do not need memory. In special instructions, we don't need memory. We just have to make the two instructions that are in and out. And in memory map, input out, is we use memory for to store the locations of the input output devices. And we use, use or we recycle the instruction. For example, we recycle the load and store instruction. Well, let's see how this operation is performed. When the keyboard, when the, from a keyboard, when a user presses the key, and character has to be shown in the screen. One of the following steps to perform an operation. Number one step, keyboard, to cast the event. That is when the user presses the key, the key needs to be needs to be collected and stored in a specific register and that register is a part of the keyboard. Number two step, microprocessor to input corrector, that is the value that is pressed by a keyboard is handled by a subsystem at some point. Microprocessor checks that corrector and it sees the type key and consults the result of the data in the main memory to make sure corrector is visualized in the right location of the screen. Number third step, microprocessor to decide how to proceed. Number four step, microprocessor to out to show out the character. Number five step, screen shows the character. Now this was all about the input output subsystem. We have talked about the ways to perform the operation and what is an input output subsystem. Now we now want to talk about the interruption. What is an instruction? There are four methods to control instruction. 
Number one is polling. Number two is income driven. Number three is direct memory access. And number four is channel I. Polling. We will start with what is polling. It is very simple to explain. In this, CPU handles everything. CPU asks devices if operation is pending, initiate processing, thus transmission of data. This is highly efficient to use. If we have a system with a lot of devices asking device, which operation is pending requires the CPU a lot of time. And if the number of devices are very large, then it could turn very inefficient to use, on which most of the time of the CPU is wasted on asking which device or which operation is pending. Number two is interrupt driven. Whenever a device requires attention, instead of CPU asking for the device, the device is going to notify the CPU. And CPU is temporarily going to stop the execution and perform what is called. Now this is called an interrupt service routine. In this CPU detects the, that there is a device that needs attention. CPU stops doing and what, what it is currently doing and start executing interruption service, which requires first to save the context of execution. CPU is temporarily going to use all of its registers and flags are going to be used by the interruption subroutine. Therefore, we are going to need to store a copy in a memory of the context so that then we can restore the situation and when we are done executing interruption service routine CPU can proceed to execute the program normally. The next method is DMA direct memory access and this method input output is done in blocks. These operations are based on blocks large blocks per kilobyte which means every time when there is a new data produced by a device CPU take care of all of the data and transfer it to memory and it still requires a lot of time where we deal with block so the solution adopted by the designers they introduced the new circuit called DMA in this CPU program DMA circuit and it does three things device need to be served number of bytes of a block and memory location from transmission of information. What does DMA do? DMA cares of, cares of supervising all of the transmission of data between device and CPU keep executing that device. So the last one is channel I.O. It is based on one circuit I.O.P. input out processor and it is connected to the system. In this world, then device is connected to a bus. We have several IOPs, and each one of them takes care of all the operations for more than one device. They are capable of dealing more than one input out of devices. So these types are suitable for large number of input devices. <coughs> In channel IO, CPU program the IOPs, and this program is this programming is different than DMA. In this IOPs are capable of executing high-level input output operations. 